In this lecture, we are going to take another security measure where we are going to implement rate limiting in order to restrict same IP address from making too many requests to our APIs. And this will help us prevent the attacks like denial of service or brutal force attack. So before we proceed further, let's first understand what are these attacks and how they can affect our application. So first we have brute force attack. In this type of attack, the hacker basically tries to guess a password by trying millions and millions of random password until they find the right one. One way to address this type of attack is by making the login request slow and the bcrypt package that we are using, it actually does that. This type of attack can also be addressed by using rate limiting, which we are going to learn about in this lecture. And Another strategy which we can also implement to avoid this type of attack is by implementing maximum login attempts. So for example, let's say after three failed login attempts, the user will have to wait for one hour until he can try login again. And this strategy we are not going to implement in this course, but you can feel free to experiment with this. Another type of attack is the denial of service attack. In this type of attack, the attacker sends so many requests to the server that it crashes the server and the application becomes unavailable. Solution for this type of attack is again implementing rate limiting, which we are going to talk about in this lecture. And another strategy would be we should also limit the amount of data that can be sent in the body in a post or patch request. So by limiting the amount of data we are receiving in the post patch or put request, we can also avoid denial of service attack. Also, we should avoid using evil regular expressions. Evil regular expressions are just regular expressions that takes an exponential time to run for non-matching inputs and they can be exploited to bring our entire application down. So to prevent these two types of attacks, we are going to implement rate limiting in our node application. Rate limiting will make sure that a single IP address does not make too many requests on our server. It will simply restrict same IP address from making too many requests to the APIs on our server. So let's go ahead and let's implement rate limiting functionality in our node application. Here, let me go ahead and let me close these files. We don't need it right now. And what we are interested in is the app.js file. So let's open app.js here. And here we are going to create a new middleware for rate limiting. So here we are going to create a global middleware function. Now what the rate limiter is going to do is it is going to count the number of requests coming from the same IP. And if there are too many requests, then it will block the incoming request from that IP. Now, in order to implement rate limiting in this express app, we need to install an NPM package called express rate limit. So here, let me open a new terminal. Okay, and actually I'll select command prompt. Let's delete this PowerShell here. Let me clear the terminal. And now let's write npm install command. And which package do we want to install? We want to install express rate limit. Let's press enter. All right, so that package has been installed. Now let's go ahead and let's require that package. So here I'll create a variable. I will simply call it as rate limit. And here we are going to require express rate limit. All right. Now let's write the code for creating the rate limiter middleware. And in order to create the rate limiter middleware, we don't have to do anything. Basically, this rate limit here, which this package is returning, it is a function. So when we will call that function, it is going to return another function. And that function is going to be a middleware function. So here we just need to call this rate limit function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that middleware after we have created this app. So let's create a variable. Let's call it limiter. You can call it anything. And as I mentioned, in order to create the rate limiting middleware, all we have to do is we have to call this function. Now, when we are calling this function, it is going to return us a middleware function. Okay. And to this function, we also need to pass an argument an options argument. So here we are going to pass an object. 
in that object we need to set some options so for example we need to set this max property and here we are going to specify how many number of requests we can allow within a given period of time so for example let's say within one hour of time i am going to allow only thousand requests not more than that so here i will set this max to thousand then we also need to specify the time frame so here as i mentioned within one hour of time i am going to allow maximum thousand requests so to specify the time frame we need to specify window and this is going to be window ms because here we need to specify the time in milliseconds so i want to allow thousand request in one hour that means in 60 minutes so we need to convert that 60 minutes into milliseconds so for that we can simply say 60 multiplied by 60 it will give us the time in seconds multiplied by thousand so this will give us the number of milliseconds in one hour and finally we also need to specify a message which will be displayed to the user if he has made more than thousand requests to our application within one hour of time frame so for the message here let's simply say we have received too many requests from this ip please try after one hour okay and that's it so here this function it is going to return us a middleware which we are storing inside this variable limiter now we want to use that middleware for that we can simply say app.use and to this first we need to specify on which urls we want to apply the rate limiter so i want to apply the rate limiter on all those urls which starts with slash api so all our apis it starts with slash api right so i want to restrict i want to apply this rate limiter on all those urls which starts with slash api and then we also need to pass this middleware here so let's go to our node terminal and let's save the changes and restart the application and now let's test this by making continuous requests from the client currently for the client we are using postman so we are going to make continuous requests from postman now here in order to test it for now i will simply set it to three okay so within one hour of time maximum we are going to allow three requests let's save the changes let's go to postman and there let me open maybe get all users api so we are going to make request to get all users so let's make a request here and currently you will see that in the headers we have seven headers right now but let me go ahead and let me make a request to this get all users api and now in the headers you will see 10 headers so there you will see two new headers this x rate limiting reset then we should also have x rate limit limit so total limit is three we have already made one request so remaining rate limit is two so you will see three new headers have been added here in the response headers okay so these are the two x rate limit limit x rate limit remaining and one we saw here x rate limit reset all right so now we have two more remaining requests which we can make within one hour let's make one more request so now you can see only one is left let's make one more request and now zero is left so if i go to body we are still getting the result we are getting the all users but now when i make the request we should see this message we have received too many requests from this ip please try after one hour okay now one more thing which i want to mention here is that now you will notice that rate limiting remaining is zero but if i go ahead and if i restart the application so if i save the changes again it will restart the application and when the application restarts if i make the request again you will notice that these values are also reset so now again the rate limit remaining is set to two so this value has also been reset so in this lecture we learned how to implement rate limiting in our express app 
and using rate limiting in our express app it allows us to prevent denial of service and brute force attacks this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day